So as we get into the end of the year, as always, we're doing our best of coverage. This is for best CPUs of 2021. It's basically the best CPUs in various categories that you can buy right now based on our full year of testing data from all the CPUs that have come out or have been relevant within the last, let's say, year or so, stemming back to the end of 2020. Now, there's a little bit of Threadripper in there too, so it goes back a little further. So we're going to be going over those. This is focused on helping you get the right CPU in the right category at the right price for your build. We will have a good amount of detail in here. If you want the full depth, as always, you can check the reviews that are linked below, but we'll talk about more of that in a moment. For this though, it's a lot different from the last four years running where it's just been a slaughter for AMD against Intel. So things have finally changed and that's exciting. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. Of course, it's not all just good news for Intel. AMD does have some victories as well. It needs to launch a couple more CPUs to really get back in the running against Intel. But it's got some key points like efficiency. And also, AMD doesn't hold, this time, the award for biggest disappointment. No, that goes to the 11900K which in the very least is useful as a punching bag, and we'll get to that later. These awards are given based on categories like best budget, best gaming CPU outright, best overall, which is a combination of all other factors in the review, uh, including price point, by the way, so that's an important differentiator for best overall. And it is the biggest mix-up we've seen since Ryzen launched, as mentioned, where Intel previously was sort of the dominator on the charts. This is intended to be a buyer's guide, so we'll link the CPUs in the description below. We will also link our relevant reviews or most recent reviews, which will have the most recent data in them below. Now, as we get into this, one thing that we're really lacking that we're sort of sad about is $200 CPUs. This is a category where previously the R5 2600 was an excellent representative. The R5 1600 also was a good representative in that $200 class. The 3600 has been low-ish, but it really started to spike the 5600X. And then on Intel, things have gotten pricier as well, especially as Alder Lake has only launched down to the i5-12600K at the time of filming. And so there's no cheaper option, which in theory will be the 12400. It looks like it'll be competitive, but uh, it's not out now. We don't have one to test, so can't really include it here. We don't know when it's coming out. It might be next year. A couple of things as we roll into this. We have a best motherboard set of pieces coming up as well with Z690 and with AM4. So if you're looking for a board to go with your CPU, you should check back for that. And then as for the awards, we'll be sending out these to Intel and AMD for their specific CPUs that were winners. If you'd like your own Crystal Sphere with a computer teardown in it, we have it on the store. These are helpful for us as we fund our operation. Uh, the large one, heads up, is extremely heavy. This is probably uh, a weapon in some jurisdictions with how heavy it is. But don't, don't bring this into a fight. You'll get charged differently. But if you want to pick one up, we have the large and the small versions. They have a set of 3D components inside of them. You can see all the way down to the screws, the PCB, the cooler, the fan design for the video card that's in there, motherboard with RAM, VRM. You can see the I.O. on the back of the board and lots of other cool stuff. So it's a cool thing to have. That's a high quality PC themed item that helps us fund what we do. And you can check that out on store.gamersnexus.net. Let's get started with the best CPUs of 2021. Our first award is for the best overall CPU of 2021. AMD has won this category from us for the last four years in a row. If you look all the way back to 2017, 2018, 2019, They've won it every time. It's been sort of a shocking turn from Intel's near decade long stronghold before that. Intel has now come to take it back though. We're giving best overall for 2021 to the Intel i5-12600K. The 12600K wins this category for being one, unlocked, two, relatively efficient, and then expanding on that, it's also relatively affordable. It's also extremely powerful across both gaming workloads and mixed production workloads. The category is for best overall, which means that the winner must combine all criteria to win. It can't just be the top on the charts. It also has to be a balance of optimal performance and efficiency, and most importantly here, price. 
Even with DDR4, as we've shown in our initial testing, the Alder Lake CPUs remain powerful in gaming workloads while becoming even more affordable. That makes the DDR4 and 12600K combination a potent option for gaming PC builds. And it's our go-to recommendation for gaming builds right now. With its MSRP of around $300, the 12600K is a far more viable overall gaming option than a 12900K for most builders. That leaves a few hundred bucks open for maybe a GPU purchase, for example. Looking at some charts briefly, you'll see that the 12600K often ended up around the gaming performance of AMD's best CPUs, outdoing the R5-5600X handily in several categories, and that'd be the direct competitor. Conveniently, the 5600X was also our most recent choice for best overall when we did a mid-year update, making for an exciting boxing match between AMD and Intel. In production workloads like code compiling Chromium, for example, and Windows, the 12600K remains overall competent and outdoes even the 10900K from the last relevant Intel generation. Blender performance is also competitive with AMD's R75800X, impressively, and the 12-core 3900X from previously. The 12600K deserves this spot in our annual awards show, and Intel, sincerely, welcome back. Our next award goes to the most efficient CPU. This category easily goes to AMD and its R95950X, where Intel has made gains in its performance and competitive offerings overall, AMD still leads power efficiency and performance per watt with its Zen 3 CPUs. The R95950X still benefits from being a stronger volt frequency bin of the R95900X, while also running 16 cores and 32 threads of Zen 3 using all three chiplets in the design. Looking at a power consumption chart, the 12900K displays its biggest weakness. It's pulling down 240 watts under a full load enough to warrant a dedicated solar panel on your roof. And although it can beat or tie the 5950X in performance, it loses hard when running an efficiency calculation. Looking at Blender specifically, the two CPUs required the same amount of time to complete our tile-based cycles render. That's great for Intel, it's back, but it was at the cost of power. Since these had the same performance in Blender, we can easily normalize for performance and just do some simple math. At five hours of rendering work, which isn't uncommon for someone doing this professionally for work, the 12900K would be at 1.2 kilowatt hours and the 5950X would be at 0.65, despite taking equivalent time to complete equivalent work. In this scenario, that's about a 50% reduction in the required kilowatt hours with the 5950X over the 12900K. Our power consumption charts previously also show how the 5950X can even outdo the 5900X for consumption and therefore efficiency, thanks entirely to the lower required B-Core to accomplish the work while maintaining stability. Alder Lake is competitive in many ways, but AMD deserves a strong recognition for maintaining such a powerful footing and efficiency. The 5600X on those same power charts is another reminder of the sheer efficiency, as is the 5800 non-X, which was shipped in OEM built. The 5600X is drawing about 65 watts, and it's one of the best gaming CPUs on the charts, although it's recently had issues with the 12600K. Next up, we're talking about the best gaming CPU. This one, by pure horsepower alone, is the Intel i9-12900K. It's a simple category. AMD famously dethroned Intel here with Zen 3, and it was Intel's last bastion against the Zen onslaught before that. Now, Intel is back and topping most of the gaming charts. We'll flash through a few of them. Of course, you can check the reviews for more depth on all of these, including more discussion on frame times. Intel had a few hiccups with Windows 10, like a big list of about 50 games with a few of them actually being relevant, not working due to de novo and other DRM conflicts with games and the new e-cores. But the company is working with Microsoft to address those. Overall, and especially with Windows 10 for raw performance, the CPU is a chart leader and only suffered issues in Three Kingdoms for Windows 10 in our testing, but in Windows 11, it fixed some of these game launching issues, although the performance was roughly the same to slightly worse depending on the scenario. Sometimes better, sometimes worse. The gaming performance didn't much change between DDR4 and DDR5. So we'd say pick the one that you're most able to source based on supply and price. It does feel worse to go with the older technology, but at least for now, DDR4 remains a powerful option for Alder Lake, and that feeling worse is more of a psychological thing today than it is an actual advantage thing. It may eventually see a switchover where there's more uplifts with DDR5 at a reasonable price, and that time period may put you into the next motherboard generation anyway. For anyone who'd categorize themselves as an FPS snob, and we mean that in an endearing way, 
The 12900K means you'll likely be limited by your GPU before your CPU. If you're shooting for ultra high refresh, the 12900K gets you there. It's unnecessary in most ways, meaning that the 12600K gets most of the performance for far less money, but we understand that there's a big audience that doesn't mind paying diminishing returns to have the true best at a task. The 12900K is the true best for gaming. Our award for most well-rounded is up next. We are assigning this to the Intel 12700K, or KF SKU, but we seriously considered both the R9 5900X and the R7 5800X. The R7 5800X is more affordable than ever right now, marked down to about $340 from our common online retail options, though we understand it may be cheaper at some physical locations. Unfortunately, that's still more than the 12600K's retail price, and it doesn't offer any advantages in our testing. If you absolutely can't wait for more 12600Ks to restock, the 5800X would be our backup option, and it's still, thanks to the price reduction, a good one, even though before we weren't really big fans of it because of its weird positioning between two otherwise very clear decisions from AMD. As for the 5900X, it'd be a good contender if it weren't $50 more expensive than the 12700KF right now. And the 5900X doesn't have an IGP either, so it's a fair comparison. The 12700K and KF end up outranking the 5900X in basically all the games we tested, and most of the production workloads we tested. The workloads where it lost were close enough to not really matter overall for the most part for most users, and after years of saying that these middle step CPUs aren't worth it from Intel, we'd say the 12700KF's price of about $425 right now is relatively sane, at least enough to distinguish it. So then, our runner up is the R7-5800X, asterisk, but the asterisk is that it depends on the pricing where you live. At price parity or better than the 12600K, it's deserving of this rank, especially if you can get it closer to $300. Our award for best high-end workstation CPU goes to Andy's Threadripper line right now. Intel has effectively vacated this market, abandoning HEDT CPUs and leaving them to rot with such phenomenal blunders as the 10980XE. AMD then maintains rank with Threadripper. We haven't retested it this year, but it's not like we particularly need to. We have old data with the 3970X that depicts it basically where it remains even today. The 12900K will encroach on territory to some extent, but Threadripper remains advantageous for heavily memory-bound workloads, with eight possible memory slots per board, and double the channels to work with. The newer Threadripper Pro CPUs double up on memory channels further, expanding to eight and offering high thread count CPUs with maximum memory capacity that far outstrips what Intel is offering in its relevant desktop modern platforms at a similar price. We're still favoring Threadripper and Threadripper Pro despite the relative age for now for our production builds. Our primary editing PC is running a 3960X and it's our most reliable system for high speed renders. For that reason, Threadripper remains our top HEDT workstation CPU, although it is getting long in the tooth, and we expect a potential revival of Threadripper sometime in the hopefully not too distant future. The next award is for the best budget CPU. We're hesitant on this one though. We're not happy with our options for this category this year, frankly, but we're doing our best to work with it. We've previously given this to the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X, but we can't tell if it's still being made. It hasn't been available for a while on our main retailer options, and if it's not been available for months and months at this point, then we don't really know if it makes sense to recommend it. It's getting old anyway. The Intel i3-10100 is still available, and it's below $100 now. It's not a great option, honestly, so the word best is only relative to the lack of other good options. If you absolutely must get the cheapest gameable CPU and go with a DGPU for the rest, the i3-10100 appears to be the main choice right now, short of used options anyway, which may be worth exploring. The 10100 is okay for most games, it'll struggle with some more thread-bound titles, but it's the best budget option we see right now. If you wanted to look at something else, the 5600G may make sense if you're trying to go for a GPU list build using only the IGP, with maybe an option to drop a DGPU in later while still having a usable CPU. Of course, we can't close out without awarding the biggest disappointment to someone. This is a category Intel also wins, but it's not a good one to win. The Intel i9-11900K, yes, it came out this year, got one of the best thumbnails this year from our channel, but for the wrong reasons. The CPU was embarrassing. It's a waste of sand. It probably should be bought in bulk by university MBA programs to give a practical demonstration of sunk cost fallacy tanking a company's reputation as it erroneously scrambles to try and recoup investment that would be better left to rot. Its chief value is as an educational device 
for teaching language learners the meaning of the word disgrace. And the fact that Alder Lake came out just eight months later means that this waste of sand can be generously rubbed into the wounds of its buyers. The 11th generation, that was really not deserving of that word, was so bad that it actually regressed in performance in some categories versus the preceding 10 series. The best thing that the 11 series did was reduce the price of the 10 series, which suddenly became interesting just because Intel gave us a new perspective for how truly useless of a product it's capable of launching. AMD, of course, shouldn't be laughing too hard at this. If you're watching people from AMD, don't forget your own massive fumble with the offensively wasteful XT series of CPUs last year. Both are a great example of the reputational cost to try and force a product through to hit arbitrarily chosen timelines. But Intel this year has one up to AMD last year and done an even better job at launching something useless. Let that be a general lesson to these two manufacturers. Dropping what you're good at and racing to compete while ill-equipped carries significant risk and Intel embodied that well with its 11900K. Intel has done better, but we can't forget the 11 series felt much like KB Lake in this one. That's it for this one then. Huge change up from the last four years. It's been AMD basically nonstop. We may have had one or two mid-year roundups where Intel kind of eked in there, like with the 8700K, it looked competitive for Intel once again, but AMD has held on strong, especially at that $200 price point, which it has sacrificed and forsaken in the past year as it's moved towards the higher average selling price CPUs and has neglected to launch a $200 or a non-X variant of the 5600 because frankly, AMD, at least until now, didn't need to. It basically occupied the space largely without competition and that hasn't happened for a very long time, since, since before I was personally reviewing CPUs. So that's a big change up. Intel's back though, they've knocked AMD out of a lot of the top slots. This is a good thing from the perspective of being exciting. It means there's competition again. It means that as CPUs launch, we'll have something interesting to look at and not just be talking about 4% uplift because the letter at the end changed and the number got one digit longer. So really refreshing to see that. And we're looking forward to seeing how AMD returns fire against Intel and how Intel lines up the rest of the low end of the stack for Alder Lake. So that's it for this one. As always, links in the description below if you're interested in anything. If you want full detail on this stuff, also it's in the description below. And Subscribe for more, check back for best cases, best motherboards, everything else we're doing for end of year roundups. Uh, this is always a fun time for us because we get to look back and go, wow, that launched this year? <laughs> this year was really long. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. We'll see you all next time.